Okay, so uh, on this tutorial we're going to be uh, controlling a relay uh, with one of these uh, radio controls. This one's the uh, the receiver for it, it's the YK04. There are other variables out there, but they basically use the same decoder chip, which is the PT2272-M4, um, which stands for momentary. Um, so what we're going to be doing is controlling a two-channel relay using the, uh, the key fob. Um, so what I'll do first is, is we'll, um, we'll put it together first, um, wire it up, the way I'm going to do it anyways. Um, like I say, I've got the break out here so I can, uh, I can get away with more than most. Um, so uh, I've also added a, uh, an aerial on this just for the range. Um, they do have one built onto them but they're not very great. Um, so what we'll do first is we'll uh, connect up the uh, relay itself. So I'll... Uh, might be better off putting trying to keep it the way around that you can see it. So let me move this power this side. And we'll just plug the power up, it makes no difference. Okay, so uh got the power up. It's probably best that you don't have the have it plugged in. Um Unless you're really competent in what you're doing. So first of all I'm going to connect the 5 volts to the relay. And then I'll connect the ground to the relay as well. And then we want... We'll connect 1 first of all. We'll take that to digital pin 2 and we'll take number 2 and we'll put that on digital pin 4 ok so that's that set up um, these uh, actually use the analogs uh, is what we're going to be using them for you can use the digitals um, just to detect highs and lows but um, we're actually also going to be using the uh, there's a, a VT pin on there, um, and it's the basic. The reason I'm going to be using it is because um, we want to make sure that any signals that get sent to this, uh, to the Arduino from this, has come from this, and it hasn't came from uh, somewhere else from another source. Um, and the way we can do that is by um, using the uh, VT pin. Basically, the VT whenever there's an incoming signal um, from these. Um, bearing in mind you can actually code them at the back you've got these blank ones here the top so top rail being the high and the bottom rail being low so you can actually code them just make sure you code the chip inside here as well to the same sequence that you've selected on here to code them otherwise if they're open like that someone might have one similar and they could pretty much control your uh, your project um, so what I'm going to do is so first of all I'm going to connect the power and the ground and I'm going to plug that straight into my rail on this side here if you said then done when one of your pins are bent Hmm. I believe we may have a problem, Houston. Um, I think the reason that is is because I've already got code on the on the actual Mac controller itself, um, and because obviously these aren't actually wired up yet, it's uh, sending a signal. I've got to be careful with this because there's obviously other pins on there as well. So I'll connect the ground first. And I'll connect the VCC, which is to the 5 volts. You can use the 3 volt rail as well, but the range isn't too great. Obviously, the higher the voltage, the better the range. Um, so, we're going to be using the, uh, the 5 volt. Okay, now we can plug the uh, Arduino back into the board. Like I say, I've already uh, configured this up so it will actually work. So I can actually turn them on and off using the uh, 
it's supposed to be A, B, C, D, um, but I've noticed, I've, had, I've bought a few of these now and I've noticed that they keep changing the, uh, the letter and where the letters are located. But basically A and the C is to turn the A off and obviously then the B and the D is to turn that off. Um, so what we'll do is we'll quickly write some code, although I've already got code written on here already. Um, I'll take you to the ID and we'll actually uh, we'll write some fresh code just to show you how easy they are to run. Okay, so um, this is the uh, code we're going to be writing. So uh, first of all, we're just going to create some integer integers um, set to zero because obviously it's going to be a value. It's going to be changing, and we're, as we go up, we're going to um, also be using the serial monitor just to check, make sure that everything that we're setting up is actually working. Um, so we'll create the first one, which is the VT pin, which is on analog one on the actual. Uh, board itself. Um, in the setup we're going to be using the serial monitor so we need to set the serial up. So the serial begin. <coughs> we'll set that to 9600. Um, so on here we're going to be just, just as a test. Um, actually whilst I'm on here I need to set up. Um, so what we'll do is we'll um, Set up a pin mode because we want to output. In fact, uh, we don't really need one for the VT. Um, so, what we'll actually do is, is um, we want to analog read. So, we need an analog read. Um, and that one I said was set to analog one. And then we want VT equals analog one so that will do the analog read for the also what we want to do is do a serial print and we're doing the line new and we'll print the uh, VT value just so we can just check to make sure that um, everything that we're doing is actually going to be working uh, and everything's been picked up so what I'm going to do now is I'll uh, Open the uh, serial monitor, I believe. Let's check, make sure we're getting data. It would help if I upload the code first. Right, so that's uploaded, and hopefully, we should be getting zeros. So, if I press something on the key, as you can see, no matter what button I press in, it's getting. Uh, a 1023, which is ba you can, I mean you can change, you can change it. But there's not really much point. Um, it's just because it's running at five volts. Obviously, it'd be half of that value if it was running it on a 3.3. Um, so we're getting what we want from there. So we can actually use that later on in the code. Um, so what we're going to do is just comment that quickly out. So we know that's good. We can take that out now, actually. Um, and we'll set up the next one, which is going to be. What we have set. We had it set to. Oh, we need to create another integer. So we'll have. Uh, um, which we'll call it a. Um, zero. And b. Zero. These are for the different buttons. Um, I'm setting up D zero. Um, we're also going to need to convert. Um, actually, I don't. I'm not able to get away with it just like that. I think. Yeah, we can do actually. Yeah, so that should be okay. So what we're going to do is now. Um, now I've got those. Is um, we don't need to set them to imports because they'll already be defaultly set to that anyways. Um, so what we'll do is come back to the code here, and we'll add. Uh, so we'll say an a equals analog read, and that one's going to be. I'm not sure which one that one's going to be yet. So what we'll do is we'll just set it to two, analog two, and uh, we'll also uh, do a serial that print. Find you and we'll have 
if that is a and we'll just uh, upload that and just check first of all just so I can figure out which buttons are actually being sent through because like I say all the uh, keys on these things are messed up most of the time so that's actually showing on C um, I would have thought it would have been the first one but it isn't so what I'm going to do now is I'll change the analog read on 2 and I'm just going to change that to 3 and then re-upload the code like I say it could quite easily be different on yours um, right so A is now coming up as that so that's set for A so we've got our A1 um, so now we can just quickly just comment that out Oh, comment that one out and we'll create a new one so we'll do B B equals analog read um, we're going to set that as the C one that was coming up before so we'll use that as A2 um, I don't need to test that because I already know from before that that's going to bring that one up so that's one's okay so I can bring that to this side now. I'm just trying to keep these aligned so they're nice and neat. Okay, so we're going to do C now. C equals analog read. Um, and we'll, I, I believe if the other two was backwards, it's quite possible that's going to be A5. So I'm going to set that one up as A5. Um, and then D equals analog read and that'll be A4 because I'm pretty sure they're back to front so uh, that should work like that now um, I'm not going to test because there's not really much point me doing it um, but you get the basic way of just setting them up just to make sure you've got the right button selected and um, we can do away with the serial monitor now because we're actually going to go back um, so we've got it reading there so what we're going to do now is just create some simple code just to um, detect the differences. I might also have to add a delay here, so I'm going to go back and just create a delay and we'll call the delay T for time. We'll set that to, I'll say 50. <coughs> so we've got a read, um, we need to delay it there, so we'll do so if A equals equals we could do more than, um, just in case. Sometimes, I don't know whether you, if you're running off a power supply or something like that, the voltage might lower or anything like that. So you might get some changes. So you could do it like that. So equals 10, 23. Um, depending on whether you've got a strong connection. Um, like I say, this isn't sold. It's just literally just plugged into the, uh, the Arduino itself. So you could do it like that. <coughs> Have it check. Um, Obviously, we've added the VT as well, so I want to make sure that the VT function is there. So we're going to add two AND symbols, and VT equals the same amount, ex more or less. Or, like I say, you could change that and just have it as a more than symbol. And obviously, we'll lower those values just to make sure. So we'll just set those to, we'll say 900. Should be higher than 900, so there shouldn't be a problem there. Oh. 900 we'll say okay so if they're 900 we want a digital digital right <coughs> for um, so if we set on A so it'll be A3 so I've actually got them set up I don't want to set the outputs out for that so I haven't actually done the outputs ever um, so okay then we need to set up two outputs <coughs> Just comment that bit out there. Underneath. So int. Um, in fact, we already know what pins are on, but don't really need to create that. Um, so what I'll do is <coughs> just go here. Um, do pin mode because we want to set the two up for pin mode. So digital pin two, and we're setting that high because that's on the loop when it first starts so we don't want them to actually switch on as soon as it comes on so that's why we're setting them high and uh, obviously the boards are looking for a low and obviously we're using digital 4 and we're setting that high as also uh, sorry I'm actually doing that wrong that needs to be output sorry my bad and the other one needs to be output as well 
I'm thinking of digital right for some reason. What's that digital right? Could just copy and paste these rather than having to keep doing them. No, now it's going to be set in two and then high. And just change that one to four because we want to set that one high also. So now in here we can come back down into the code and obviously when we, uh, we want to be setting the first one, so A's for the first one, so digital right, and we're going to set that low because that will actually trigger it on. So we've got a digital right low. Um, on the next one down, this is for turning that one off. So um, we'll do the same again. So this time it'll be if B is more than 900 and VT is more than 900. Then we'll digital. Can't find my keys. Digital right. Um, two, and we'll be setting that high to switch that one off. Um, same again. So if C more than 900, and then VT more than 900, digital right. This time it's going to be four, so digital pin four. And we're setting that low for turning it on. Oh, I forgot that. And do the same for this one also. But for this time it's going to be D. So if D more than 900, and and VT more than 900. See, the reason we use adding the VT is just to make sure that it is a signal. So there's you've, you've got two, basically two inputs, just in case, I don't know, let's say... Uh, one of your wires come off on one of your pins, um, you'll get like a float value with the analogs. Um, I'll show you that in a second what I mean. And it could possibly jump up to them amounts and it could, you know, give you a false trigger. Um, and you might actually turn something on that you don't actually want on. Um, so this is like a secondary caution, uh, precaution, sorry. Um, digital right. And um, we would be setting four and on uh, one, sorry, for the high. So setting that high, that will turn that off. Um, I'll quickly show you now um, what I mean by the uh, float. I've got nothing connected at the moment to digital IO zero. So what I'm going to do is, is um, I need to add a quickly add a digital read here. So we'll um, we'll just call it test. Um, I need to create a quick in int for it. So int test equals analog read and that's going to be the uh, A0 obviously there's nothing on there at the moment so uh, this is just for the uh, showing you what I'm talking about and then we want a serial dot print line new and we'll print out what's actually happening there um, also I'm going to add the quick delay on there so it's not actually spamming so you get a better of a idea what's actually happening. So um, we want that one for A. No, we don't set that for test. So test. <coughs> um, I think that's pretty much good to go. So I'll add a delay. And add a delay. So we'll just add a delay so it's not actually spamming. We'll stick that to I don't know half a second, and then we'll upload that quickly, and then uh, show you the uh, thing, and then we'll go back to the actual project. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, I see. Missed one of those off. Does happen. Especially when I'm recording. Okay, so that's uploaded and we should be getting a reading now from the uh, the one that's not actually connected. And you can see how the values are actually changing. Um, them values can jump up and down um, quite dramatically sometimes. Um, especially if there's other things using stuff on the board, you can see it jumped to 700 and something there. So you, if it's set to like 500, more than 500, you'd be getting false triggers right there, and you'd have your relays clicking on and off, left, right, and centre. And that's the reason we're using the VT, just in case you do get a disconnect somewhere. You've got like a secondary 
um, so nothing will actually happen on these unless um, you know they're both high obviously VT being the signal pin so if there's any incoming signal to the uh, the actual radio module itself that will go high as that information is coming in from the actual remote and obviously the signal what whichever button you're coming in as well which is being decoded that will also trigger whichever pin you know it's uh, sending high at the time um, which should be a, you know a secondary safety feature um, when you're actually using these um, so what I'll do now is um, we've got the code, I've uploaded it so we're ready to go and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these out because I don't actually need them in now um, I could do with that delay being in, I added the delay there T50 so what we'll do is we'll add that on the uh, actual buttons, so we don't need the delay in there but I'm going to do it anyways um, let's add to T so I'm just going to add the delay at the end Okay, and then I'm just going to upload that. I think that's everything we need. Okay, so the code's up. Uh, I'll take you back to the uh, the actual project, and uh, hopefully it should all be working. Okay, so uh, we're back to the uh, project. Um, code's uploaded. Uh, I'm just going to quickly check. Um, yeah, pretty much straight away it's working off the bat. There is a slight delay there, but I think it's the values. That's why I changed it because um, originally when it was uh, the 1023 value, um, it wasn't always detecting it, um, especially with the range as well. If you're too far away, sometimes it wouldn't detect. Um, there's a lot, like I say, there's a lot of electrical noise. Um, from other projects and things I've got running in the air and it's quite close to the Wi-Fi as well which might be affecting the signal hence the reason I uh, added this uh, funky better wire just to give me a better signal on the uh, actual device but like I say you can quite easily control your relays from here and obviously the VT is doing its job if that VT wasn't connected these wouldn't actually turn on um, just to show you that what I'll actually do is I'll take that off and I'll just bend that VT pin up um, just so it's not actually going into anything and um, we'll plug this back in again. See if we're now we're pressing the buttons, like nothing's happening, nothing at all. No matter which one we press, that's because it wants that VT pin signal as well. Without that, nothing will happen. It's like I say, it's like a safety feature in, in its own. Um, it, like I say, commonly people don't use the VT pin. Um, it is there. I mean. It, I believe it's just in case you've got like an LED light attached so you can see the flicker rate. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to look at the flicker rate um, of the data being sent in. Um, pretty pointless, really. I suppose you could use the VT to detect the actual signal uh, from the actual receiver itself. Um, if you wanted to actually put down the data of the uh, flashes, obviously it'd be sending some sort of a code over the... Uh, over the waves, and uh, that VT pin would be, you know, a way of actually detecting uh, the signal because it'll actually uh, each one bleeps out a different code. Um, so I'd imagine that'd affect the uh, data that's coming from. But uh, I believe that's probably what it's there for. And like I say, most people just string them to LEDs or don't use them at all. So um, I hope you found that useful. And obviously, it's an alternative way of driving. You, your relays. You don't have to buy these with the with the uh, these already on it. You can buy them with these on it already. These little radio things and there's different versions of them out there. Um, you can just use an Arduino. Um, if you wanted, you could actually um, these chips here. They can actually change the chip on the. Um, like I say, these are the momentary. So when you release the button, they basically it releases. The actual thing, hence why we're having to use the uh, what's it? But if you wanted to run the uh, these directly, because these were the same, I believe when they clicked on, I believe they pulled uh, pulled too low, like ground. So I'm not sure whether they do or not. Um, I believe they do. But uh, if you got the uh, not the momentary, there's a latching type, which is the L. It's got the L at the end, L4. Um, that's the latching type, and that'll basically. Um, it'll stay on so you, you could actually do away with the Arduino altogether and you won't have to program anything um, so uh, like I say I hope that's uh, helpful to anyone that wants to use 
one of these. Uh, I just thought I'd quickly put this up. I mean, there are videos out there covering these. Um, some aren't very in depth. Some don't give you no code. So I just thought I'd cover them all and uh, see it's all in one place for you. Um, any questions or anything like that? Just uh, leave a comment, and I'll uh, I'll get back to you. Um, thanks for watching.